Heading, Combating Erroneous Teaching. Subheading, Meet Sophistries with Truth. I am instructed to say to you that it is not best to dwell upon the spiritualistic sentiments, the strange, misleading theories which have for years been coming in among us. It is not best to preach on the subject of pantheism or to read quotations from authors who write on the subject and the specious, deceptive errors that lead to it. The statements made in Testimonies, Volume 8, are sufficient to warn our people to avoid these errors. These statements will do more to enlighten minds than all the explanations of theories that our ministers and teachers may put forth concerning these matters. If you try to handle these subjects, you will be led to repeat the sophistries of Satan, unless you will help Satan to present his false theories to the people. Resolve never, never to repeat error, but always to teach the truth. Fill hearts and minds with the solemn, sacred truth for this time. Dwell on present truth, on Christ's second coming. The Lord is coming very soon. We have only a little while in which to present the truth for this time, the truth that is to convert souls. This truth is to be presented in the utmost simplicity, even as Christ presented it, so that the people can understand what is truth. Truth will dispel the clouds of error. Give the people present truth. Talk the truth. Fill their minds with truth. Build up the strongholds of truth. And do not bring Satan's theories to minds that should not hear in regard to them. What the people need is not a representation of the seductive arts of Satan, but a presentation of the truth as it is in Jesus. Remember that the devil can be served by a repetition of his lies. The less we handle these objectionable subjects, the purer, cleaner, and less tainted will be our minds and our principles. And I have been shown that we are not to enter into controversy over these spiritualistic theories, because such controversy will only confuse minds. These things are not to be brought into our meetings. We are not to labor to refute them. If our ministers and teachers give themselves to the study of these erroneous theories, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. It is not the work of the gospel minister to voice Satan's theories. Hold up the truth. Magnify the truth. Say, it is written. Letter 175, 1904. Subheading, falsehoods must be skillfully unmasked. The apostle Paul warns us that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. This is what we may expect. Our greatest trials will come because of that class who have once advocated the truth, but who turn from it to the world and trample it under their feet in hate and derision. God has a work for his faithful servants to do. The attacks of the enemy must be met with the truth of his word. Falsehood must be unmasked. Its true character must be revealed, and the light of the law of Jehovah must shine forth into the moral darkness of the world. We are to present the claims of his word. We shall not be held guiltless if we neglect this solemn duty. But while we stand in defense of the truth, let us not stand in defense of self and make a great ado because we are called to bear reproach and misrepresentation. Let us not pity ourselves, but be very jealous for the law of the Most High. Says the Apostle, the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. On every side we shall see men easily led captive by the delusive imaginations of those who make void the word of God. But when the truth is brought before them, they are filled with impatience and anger. But the exhortation of the apostle to the servant of God is... Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. We must cherish carefully the words of our God, lest we be contaminated by the deceptive workings of those who have left the faith. We are to resist their spirit and influence with the same weapon our master used when assailed by the prince of darkness. It is written, We should learn to use the word of God skillfully. The exhortation is, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. There must be diligent work and earnest prayer and faith to meet the winding error of false teachers and seducers, for in the last days perilous times shall come. Review and Herald, January 10, 1888. 
Subheading, The Sincere Rescued from Deceptions. The means by which we can overcome the wicked one is that by which Christ overcame the power of the word. God does not control our minds without our consent. But if we desire to know and to do his will, his promises are ours. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If any man willeth to do his will, he shall know of the teaching. Through faith in these promises, every man may be delivered from the snares of error and the control of sin. Every man is free to choose what power he will have to rule over him. None have fallen so low, none are so vile, but that they can find deliverance in Christ. The demoniac, in place of prayer, could utter only the words of Satan, yet the heart's unspoken appeal was heard. No cry from a soul in need, though it fail of utterance in words, will be unheeded. Those who will consent to enter into covenant relation with the God of heaven are not left to the power of Satan or to the infirmity of their own nature. They are invited by the Savior. Let him take hold of my strength, that he may make peace with me, and he shall make peace with me. The spirits of darkness will battle for the soul once under their dominion, but angels of God will contend for that soul with prevailing power. The Desire of Ages, pages 258, 259, 1898. Subheading, to curious admit we do not know. Letters have come to us in regard to matters upon which God has given us no light, and we are pleased to say to these inquirers, we do not know. The great anxiety in every mind should be to know God and do his requirements. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Those who are so curious to find out things that have not been made known in the scriptures are generally surface students in regard to those things which have a bearing on the daily life and practice. We are to reveal to the world that which God has seen necessary to reveal to us. We are not doing the will of our Heavenly Father when we speculate upon things which He has seen fit to withhold from us. It is the privilege of everyone to reveal to others that He appreciates the worth of divine truths, that He appreciates the treasures of eternal life by making every sacrifice to obtain the reward. Manuscript 104, 1898.